Bristol southwest of England beautiful day beautiful city unique history I'm gonna do some walking take a look around explore the city but particularly I want to explore the unique place this city has in black history and particularly the transatlantic slave trade history and this city here along with Liverpool um, in England was a very integral part in the shipment and the trade of African people from the main continent to the Americas. So I'm gonna do this walk. Should take about 90 minutes. Guinea Street. Guinea Street and the Ostrich Club. On looks alone, this appears to be an unassuming street winding its way from the waterfront in the summer a beer garden spills out into the cobbles from the homely looking pub which i'll get to in a in a minute the scene seems to pose no unusual questions the stories behind these two places though are at the heart of slavery in bristol guinea street this row of five-story houses was home to several renowned slave traders. The street's harborside location was ideal for managing their day-to-day -day affairs. More intriguing, however, is how the street got its name. Today, Guinea is a country in West Africa. In the early uh, let's see, in the early 18th century though, Westerners used this name for the whole of Africa's West Coast. So if you look at old maps um, of uh, Africa, particularly like in the uh, 17th, early 18th century, the Golden Guinea Pub. Mm. at the whole west coast of Africa, sub-Saharan part portion of Africa, is described or marked as Guinea. So you can see the uh, place points of Guinea in this whole area and its connection to those early days of English trade in Africa. During this period, London-based Royal African Company held a, a royal monopoly to trade with Africa for gold, ivory, and enslaved people. The RAC symbol was an elephant with a cast on its back, with a castle on its back. The Guinea coin takes its name from the gold that was bought from Guinea from the coast of Africa. Guineas were minted between 1663 in 1813. And some have a, let's see. Hmm. Very fascinating. Uh, this is the ostrich. Now turn to look at the unusually named Ostrich Pub, which is here. Mm. The pub, built in 1745, named for perhaps for the African bird the Europeans had known since the 13th century, or a corruption of a nearby area known as Oyster Reach. Its position on the Dockside Bay 
probably made it where sailors congregated, making it ideal for the underhand recruiting of crews for slave ships. Fascinating. Okay, on to the next location. Walk past the front of the pub, turn right to follow the harbor side. Right along until you reach a road crossing the channel. Walk up onto the bridge and turn left to follow it over the water. Go straight over the mini road, of the mini round roundabout and stop at the corner of Queen Square just outside the hole in the wall pub. Which is on the other side of this bridge. I didn't even know you can walk through these guys. It's quite a nice day outside. These are those famous row houses that you see in all of the postcards of Bristol. Not quite sure what they're called or... But they're multicolored and they're kind of part of this whole Guinea Street area. So while I'm walking to the next location, a little bit of history or overview of... of uh, Kind of the reason why I'm doing this walk. See, Bristol, um, like I mentioned before, was a big part of the Middle Passage, the transatlantic slave trade, trading of uh, goods between the Middle Package, <laughs> Middle Package, Middle Passage between Africa and the Americas. Those goods included rum, sugar, gold. And as you see, most of these uh, dockside cities along the coast, the Atlantic Ocean is not too far. We're a hub for shipbuilding. Shipbuilding back in those days, was a very lucrative industry. And Bristol in particular had fleets several fleets, no, nearly 500 fleets that carried about four to 500 slaves each. So you can imagine how many, you know, people were brought from Africa to the Caribbean and elsewhere from fleets that left these very docks, this very area. And slavery, of course, was the most valuable commodity owners of these ships were able to write off one third of their cargo losses so revolts in the in the uh, ship revolts thrown overboard and the profits were enormous as you can imagine so here's the hole in the wall pub circa 1776 all right so it says here the bristol harbor has been internationally significant since the 13th century where it began training with trading with europe and became second biggest ports after london like liverpool for the north bristol's west coast location made it a hub for boat building by the 17th and 18th centuries bristol was one of England's most prolific ports. Its size and location encouraged the city's involvement in the triangular trade. I kind of mentioned all this. Hmm. On the dock side of the hole in the wall pub, you can see a spy house, which is on the other side. 
a room where a lockout would keep watch for press gangs. Press gangs operated for the Royal Navy. Um, kidnapped sailors. Finding crew for slave ships also was was also difficult because of the high mortality rates. behind me that I just showed was Queen Square. Statue behind me is of Edward Colston, one of the uh, premier philanthropists and also um, investor in the transatlantic slave trade. It's a close-up of the statue. I couldn't really get a close-up of the picture of that old mansion, I think is number 29 where the mayor once lived. Payroll's Bridge. This bridge is dedicated to the memory of Payroll, an African, an enslaved man of African origin who was brought from the Caribbean island to Nevis, from Nevis to Bristol in 1783. He was a servant of the Penn family who lived in what is now the Georgian House Museum and died in 17. Hmm. 
fascinating. I believe there's actually a grave not too far from here of this Pedro, who this, whom this bridge is dedicated for.